Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to our Mount Pleasant Remembrance Zoom service. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, if you're joining us for the first time, we're just catching up on YouTube later. Thank you so much that uh, you've chosen to be with us today, and we hope that you have a blessed time. And as we said, uh, today is Remembrance Day, where we remember those that have laid down their lives and paid the ultimate sacrifice. So our service will be dedicated uh, to that. And uh, Gail and Graham have kindly uh, put this service together. So thank you so much, Gail, and thank you so much, Graham. For those who do not know me and for the purposes of the YouTube recording, my name is John McGarrigal. I'm a deacon at Mount Pleasant Baptist Church in Blackwood. So it's wonderful uh, to see you all this morning. I hope you've had a good week and I hope you're having a good morning. As I say, the uh, uh, we're just saying recently that the weather has just been just so mild. And today we also have a mild weather day as well. And hopefully it'll stay dry for us, especially for all the remembrance uh, services which are going on today. So before we get into the main part of our service, let's uh, settle our minds and our hearts and let's come before the Lord in a quiet time of prayer. So let us let us pray together. Father, we thank you for today and our online and on site services. And we pray for everyone who is participating and attending. And Father, we this of all days is a difficult day for so many as we remember those who made and paid the ultimate sacrifice in conflict and war and continue to do so throughout the world today. That sacrifice we are so grateful for, as we can enjoy freedoms and a life that would be so different had they not laid down their life for us. We lift up the families of those who have lost loved ones in war. Please comfort them. Please give them your peace and your grace. And just for a moment, Father, we'll just have just a few moments of quiet reflection of those that we may know, or we may have those in the family who have made that sacrifice, who are even at war at this moment in time. So just Quiet now, mind, minds and hearts, just for one moment. Father, we are also in a spiritual battle. And we pray that you give us your strength and your healing and your restoration to continue that fight. Long before a bullet is loaded into a gun or a bomb is dropped, a spiritual battle would have preceded that action. And we pray, Father, in the world today for the cessation of these acts of war and these acts of violence. We pray that the whole world reunites and learns to love again. You are no stranger to sacrifice as you lay down your life for us, Father. On that cross through Jesus, he paid that ultimate sacrifice so his blood could wash our sins away. And we thank you, Father for that immeasurable sacrifice as we read in Ephesians that you made for us. So Father, we lift up this service to you this morning and we pray that you'll be with us. And we pray that you'll be with all the families and the loved ones, remembering those who are either serving in conflict and war now or have made that ultimate sacrifice. We bring this all before you now in your precious name, Jesus. Amen. So I'm going to play uh, our first song.
So just run through a couple of notices for this week. Um, pretty much everything's happening as usual this week. So um, I think the prayer meeting is on, lunch club is on, coffee morning is on. A um, couple of different things. One is that nominations for new deacons, that closes today. So uh, if you've been meaning to nominate someone, then you need to get their name to Sandra Bray today. But you do need to um, have their permission to do so and you need two other people supporting you. So that closes today. So please pray for those people that have been nominated. Uh, being a deacon isn't easy and um, we should keep all of the deacons in our in our prayers, proposed ones and existing ones. There is a deacons meeting on Tuesday evening, uh, so please pray for the deacons at uh, seven o'clock as they have that meeting. And then something new on Thursday morning at 9.30, um, Andy and Julie with their daughter Joanne are starting uh, a new toddlers group. Um, so that's 9.30 in the building on Thursday morning. I think it runs till 11 o'clock. Um, so please pray for that initiative. Um, I know that it's certainly been missed um, over the last couple of years. So please pray for that. And if anybody um, wants to volunteer sort of once a month or something like that or beforehand to help put toys out or afterwards to help pack toys away, uh, please speak to uh, Andy or Julie. They'd be delighted to hear from you, I'm sure. Um, and on a personal note, um, as Cecile mentioned, uh, the Christmas fair yesterday, I'm actually doing a Christmas fair this Saturday in Bethany Baptist Church in Risca, which is right next door to Liddles. So there's plenty of space to park and uh, I'll she'll be taking some Christian themed uh, crafts along uh, Christmas ones and other ones. So if you fancy a, a Christmas fair, pop along to that. So. Um, and I think that's all the notices that we've got this morning. So uh, I'll play one more song and then we'll go into Graham and Gail's uh, reflective service.
thank you, John and Karen, for leading us so far in the in this service. And yeah, today is is our national uh, day of remembrance, and there are many services taking place remembering the fallen of the Great War, World War One, and all the subsequent conflicts since then. Now, ever since the murder of Abel by Cain, uh, we can read about that in chapter 3 of Genesis, and it's covered by Mark in his great little series of Bible notes, which I'd commend to you all to read. Ever since then, man has exercised his capacity to kill for all sorts of reasons, and war is the extreme example of this. And almost always, it's followed by a period of regret, but the damage continues as the wounds of war and conflict extend into the prolonged emotional and mental distress experienced by those who fought and by their families, and also by those caught up in the so-called collateral damage experienced by civilians in today's modern warfare. There's perhaps no greater demonstration of the fall of man from God's presence than his wars. But the fall itself is the result of an even greater war taking place between Lucifer, Satan, the fallen angel, and God. There's a battle going on in the heavens, as these verses in Daniel chapter 10 explain. And one of them is going to read it. On the 24th day of the first month, as I was standing on the bank of the great river, the Tigris, I looked up and there before me was a man dressed in linen with a belt of fine gold from Euphaz around his waist. His body was like topaz, his face like lightning, his eyes like flaming torches, his arms and legs like the gleam of burnished bronze and his voice like the sound of a multitude. I, Daniel, was the only one who saw the vision. Those who were with me did not see it, but such terror overwhelmed them that they fled and hid themselves. So I was left alone, gazing at this great vision. I had no strength left. My face turned deathly pale and I was helpless. Then I heard him speaking and as I listened to him, I fell into a deep sleep, my face to the ground. A hand touched me and set me trembling on my hands and knees. He said, Daniel, you who are highly esteemed, consider carefully the words I'm about to speak to you and stand up for I now have now been sent to you. And when he said this to me, I stood up trembling. Then he continued, do not be afraid, Daniel, since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before God, your words were heard and I have come in response to them. But the prince of the Persian kingdom resisted me 21 days. Then Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me because I was detained there with the king of Persia. Now I have come to explain to you what will happen to your people in the future, for the vision concerns a time yet to come. Thank you. Description there of the, the great spiritual warfare that goes on. And it's interesting that even God's angels can be detained by the opposition, by, in this case, the king of Persia. And Michael, one of the archangels, has to come and help there's so much uh, more we could say about that, but we won't today. So our human conflicts are the result of the great spiritual battle going on for our very souls. And the Old Testament contains many accounts of the battle God's pe people were engaged in. And some of these are, are really horrific. They might seem to be superfluous and gratuitous even to the Bible's message of salvation and the promise of God's love and peace. But they are the backdrop against which the whole plan of our redemption and the coming of the Messiah is played out. 
And even within these stories, we catch glimpses of the nature of God and his plan, purpose for us. Elijah, that great prophet, was in hiding, fearing for his life as he was being sought by the terrible Jezebel. And while he was hiding in a cave, this happened. It's recorded in 1 Kings <clears throat> chapter 19. And the word of the Lord came to him. What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars and put your prophets to death with a sword. I am the only one left and now they are trying to kill me too. The Lord said, go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Thank you. Yeah, that passage has been uh, commented on in all sorts of ways and forms part of some of our favourite hymns. And I'd just like to share one of those hymns now. Uh, you'd be very familiar with it. It's taken from a poem written by a Quaker, John Greenleaf Whittier. And there's a whole story behind that as well. But let's let's listen to this um, this
Okay. So rather than just move on very quickly from that hymn and the words, I'd like to use it as a basis for a reflective time, a time of prayer, as we we meditate on those words and what they say, really. So let's let's just come and reflect um, on these words. And Gail's going to help with this. For our warring humanity and the conflicts that we create between ourselves in family, friendships, work and church. Dear Lord and Father of mankind, forgive our foolish ways. Reclothe us in our rightful mind. In purer lives, thy service find. In deeper reverence, praise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the commun our community of faith, our leaders and all who serve in any way. In simple trust like theirs, who heard beside the Syrian sea the gracious calling of the Lord. Let us, like them, without a word, rise up and follow thee. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the gift of God's presence and the privilege of prayer. For us, when we have difficulty in finding the time and opportunity. O Sabbath rest by Galilee, O calm of hills above, where Jesus knelt to share with thee the silence of eternity, interpreted by love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <clears throat> For those who govern and lead in whatever sphere of life, for those who trust in their own strength and have selfish motives. For the many distractions that fill our lives and keep us from hearing you. With that deep hush, subduing all our words and works that drown the tender whisper of thy call. As noiseless, let thy blessing fall as fell thy manner down. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who suffer, whether personally or for others, for those who are imprisoned by past trauma or bad life experiences, for the many crises of the times. Drop thy still dews of quietness till all our strivings cease. Take from our souls the strain and stress and let our ordered lives confess the beauty of thy peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For God's kingdom of love and peace to come in us, for our unholy and unhelpful desires, for the gifts and ministries which we have been given that proclaim his kingdom truth. Breathe through the heats of our desire, thy coolness and thy balm. Let sense be dumb, let flesh retire. Speak through the earthquake, wind and fire, O still, small voice of calm. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. So against the Old Testament world of physical battles, the New Testament era describes the coming of the Messiah, not as an all-conquering hero and deliverer, as was the Jewish expectation, 
but as the embodiment, the incarnation of that still, small voice, a baby. Jesus, through his own death, laid the foundation for peace with God through the forgiveness of sin, which is the root cause of all our troubles. He did battle with Satan himself on the cross and defeated the power of death by his resurrection. The kingdom of heaven is come on earth through the giving of the Holy Spirit, and for those who have been born again by faith in him, there is a new order an alternative perspective on our human condition. Yeah, sin and death, wars and conflict still exist. But for the believer, these are now transitory. Our hope is in the future coming of the Lord Jesus and eternity spent in his presence. Now, Jesus told his disciples that no one would know when he would return but that there would be signs. He warned them of following any counterfeit Messiah. The important thing was to be ready and to eagerly live in the expectation of his return, even through the promised tribulation. And here's Matthew's account of that in chapter 24. Jesus left the temple and was walking away when his disciples came up to him to call his attention to its buildings. Do you see all these things, he asked? Truly, I tell you, not one stone here will be left on another. Every one will be thrown down. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately. Tell us, they said, when will this happen and what will be the sign of your coming? and of the end of the age. Jesus answered, watch out that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name claiming, I am the Messiah and will deceive many. You will hear of wars and rumours of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Amen. Thank you. Here's a song which I believe expresses something of that hope and expectation of the Lord's return.
take place, but the end is not yet. The nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. Sun will be darkened, and the moon will give no lights. The stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Um, yeah, that's a, a good prayer. Make it soon. And in the, the days of the early church, when they were suffering so much deadly persecution, they had a common uh, a, a greeting that they shared with each other. And in Aramaic, that was Maranatha, which means the Lord is coming. And that's how they would greet each other amongst the turmoil of those days we don't hear that word so much now it, it used to be quite um common uh well known amongst christian circles but maybe it's something that we could uh reintroduce in our greetings with one another in these these days maranatha the lord is coming as an encouragement And today we do live in days of conflict. And conflict isn't just war. It can be found even amongst the closest of fellowships. We have conflicts with one another. And that overall conflict as Christians with the world is very, very present. We are told in, uh, in Ephesians chapter 6 to put on the whole armour of God so we can take our stand against the devil's schemes. And we're told that out there that our main enemy is Satan and his army. And the battlefield is spiritual. And the armour that we have is spiritual. That's a whole other sermon again. Our uniform is that of the children of God. And our overriding mission is to share the love of God with each other and with the world. And we must not be driven by hate in any form, but by God's love for us, for each other, and for the world. And this is part of um, Paul's prayer for the Ephesians in Ephesians chapter 3. For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, 
to him be glory in the church and in Jesus Christ throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, John. So I'd, I'd like to close with another reflection on another hymn. I don't think we know this hymn so well, but we'll use the words to reflect on what we've shared and God's uh, word to us. For the Holy Spirit's work in us, we might be rooted and grounded in love. We sing a love that sets all people free, that blows like wind, that burns like scorching flame, enfolds the earth, springs up like water clear. Come, living love, in our hearts today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the opportunities to share God's love with others. We sing a love that seeks another's good, that longs to serve and not to count the cost. A love that yielding finds itself made new. Come, caring love, live in our hearts today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For courage. For courage and strength to stand up for Jesus in all circumstances. We sing a love unflinching, unafraid, to be itself despite another's wrath. A love that stands alone and undismayed. Come, strengthening love, live in our hearts today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For perseverance to seek God's kingdom first. For wisdom not to become complacent in our traditions and lifestyles. We sing a love that wandering will not rest until it finds its way, its home, its source. Through joy and sadness, pressing on refreshed. Come, pilgrim love, live in our hearts today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the refining power of love to purify us and transform us. For those who hold on to old grudges and for broken relationships. For the joy of salvation to be evident in our daily lives. We sing a the Holy Spirit, full of love, who seeks out scars of ancient bitterness, brings to our wounds the healing grace of Christ. Come, radiant love, live in our hearts today. Lord, in your mercy, you are prayer. So may love indeed be our song to each other and the world. And may we be rooted and grounded in love and bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit in our lives. May we remember those who have fallen today and the future they sacrificed for us. And may we also remember the living, those we know who carry the scars of conflict and need the healing grace of the Holy Spirit. The Lord bless you. Amen. Graham, do you want to play that song we sing a love? I think we've got time. Well, it, uh, I could do, I suppose, if you think we've got time. Shall I? Yeah. <laughs> okay.
Thank you, Graham. So we're going to come into the remembrance part of our service uh, this morning. I've got a video to show to you. Um, so let's just bring our hearts quietly uh, as we approach uh, 11 o'clock. Let us think of uh, those people that have given their lives for us. over many conflicts, over many years. Let's remember them. shall grow not old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning we will remember them. So let's just pray. Father, we thank you for the services that are going on around the country and around the world today, this Remembrance Day, Lord. 
we thank those that have put work and effort and sought your words, Lord, to bring to us. We thank them. Lord, we lift up to you our service people, our men and our women who fight for us, that we might have the freedom to speak as we wish, to think as we wish. Lord, we lift them up to you, all those people that are in conflict around the world at the moment, especially those, Lord, in Ukraine and indeed in Russia, who are fighting a war even on this day, Lord. So, Lord, we lift all these people up to you. We thank you for your mercy and your blessings. We thank you that we live in a relatively safe location, Lord, by an accident of birth. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for everything. In the name of your precious son, Jesus. Amen. So thank you, everyone. Um, remember that we're back now in two weeks time for our uh, communion service. Um, I think John and I will be taking that. So um, do come again then and uh, we will see you. Uh, we will see you soon. Goodbye. God bless. Have God a good bless. week. Bye bye.